Well, I believe the scripture teaches that we're to confess our sins to one another, book of James. So I come today bearing sin that I must confess to you. I am a serial killer. I am a serial killer of birds. I didn't set out to be. It's not that I gain any morbid pleasure from killing birds. And it's been a long time since I've killed any. But there was a day when I suspect that my face and reputation were famous in the world of crows and sparrows. The first time I ever killed a bird, it was a total accident and yet not. My parents had given me a BB gun for Christmas. And when spring came around, I went out in the backyard with my BB gun. Our, our yard bordered a huge field to the west where the WLS radio booster tower was. If you ever listen to WLS radio, you can sometimes get it at night all the way at least to Colorado. I've heard it there. We bordered the huge, huge field where that was. And, and I went out back one day and I could shoot freely toward that field and a bird landed on top of a telephone pole. So I pumped my little Crossman BB gun 25 times, which was to the maximum amount of pressure. I pointed at the bird thinking there's no way. I'm, I'm not that good. And I pulled the trigger and the bird went down. I, I blew him off the telephone pole into the field and I was too chicken to go check, but I'm pretty sure that the, the way he fell, he was done. And that, that was my first bird kill. But in years after that, I became, I became a terror to the bird family. We, I've told you before about the camping trips that we'd take with youth groups, the camps we would go to, they weren't like camping in tents, but that's not the point. Uh, we would go to a, a conference center in New Mexico oftentimes, probably a dozen trips. And we would get to Tucum Carry, New Mexico, a little wide spot on the road. And a police officer, a, a New Mexico state trooper told me the best way to get where we were going was to get off there and take Highway 104 to Las Vegas, New Mexico, and catch up with a different expressway there. And he said, you can go as fast as you want. No one's out there. I took that as permission. So we probably skirted throughout there. It was nothing but desert and cactus at 70 or 80 miles an hour. Our little caravan of, of vans and, and oftentimes over 100 teenagers plus adults. And there were a lot of birds that would swoop down in front of the van. I was always the lead van. And, and they would think for some reason that they could beat me and they would have no idea that that a van could go 70 or 80 miles. No, they're just birds. And they would sweep in in front of me and and without fail, they would glance off my windshield <clears throat> or smack into the grill of the van, bounce off the headlights. No more bird. The, the kids began keeping count of how many birds I annihilated every time we drove down that road. And, and they would pit my score on the way out against my score on the way back. And they would remember it from year to year. How many birds do you think Rob can get this year? It became quite an event. But I never, I never intentionally killed a bird. I never wanted to, it just, it just happened. You, you can't swerve when you've got 15 people in a van to save a bird when you could hurt those 15 people. I saw elk out there sometime. I never hit an elk. Just birds. I feel badly, badly about that today. I, I haven't killed a bird in a long time. As you know, I just put up a new aquarium and I confess to you that the first seven fish that went in it, they were, they, I warned them that they were on what could be a suicide mission. So I bought cheap fish and I, I told them I needed them to scope it out and see if it, was, if it was safe. None of them lasted 12 hours. I haven't put any more in it. I'm taking the water in to get it tested. So I've begun wiping out fish now. But there was a day when birds were evidently, uh, you know, targeted by me. I'm sorry, I'm a serial bird killer. And I read what Jesus says about birds. In Matthew chapter 10, in verse 29. 
Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? And not one of them will fall to the ground apart from your father. But even the hairs on your head are numbered. Fear not, therefore, you are of more value than many sparrows. See, God's counting his sparrows. And I had for years this mental image every time I would hit a sparrow that God would take his eraser and go. And then he'd wait for the next one. Multiple times that day, erasing sparrows from his list. Because you see, God cares about them. He cares about sparrows. He knows I wasn't trying to kill them. He knows that they shouldn't have flown in front of me. He knows he's not mad at me. But it doesn't change the fact that God cares about something as simple and as lowly as a sparrow in the desert or a fish in my aquarium. They matter to God. And Jesus, Jesus tells us that if the sparrows matter that much, how much do you think you matter? Do you realize this morning how deeply and passionately God loves you? Do, do you have any idea this morning the thought that he puts into your life, the concern that he shows for your life, the desire that he has to know you, to have a relationship with you and fellowship with you and enjoy you while you enjoy him. Do you understand that that is the very heartbeat of God? To know and love his people, to know and love you? That's what God wants more than anything else a relationship with you with me with us do you know how i know that i know that simply by the fact that we're the only thing jesus died for we're the only thing that god loves so deeply that he sent his son to pay the ultimate price for that's deep love that's huge love and that's how God feels about you today and and it, I, I think it breaks his heart when, when we don't like ourselves I think it breaks the heart of God when we think of ourselves as throwaway people when we see ourselves as being worth less than other people that we know because their lives are flashier or they have nicer things or we think they're smarter or better looking and we do such a disservice with for with we do such a disservice to God when we feel that way because he loves you you that much so much that he counts the hair on your head nothing nothing about you escapes the notice and the attention of God. He knows what you're thinking. He knows where you hurt. He knows what's going on in the details, the smaller things in your, in your life. He doesn't just pay attention to the big things that you think to tell him about. He pays attention to everything. He knows how many breaths you have taken so far today. He knows how many times you have blinked today and he cares. Isn't that crazy? Isn't it crazy that God would love a sparrow that much? But he does. Jesus said so. And if that's true, then I need to, I need to start thinking a little bit differently about myself and about the people around me. I need to start loving them as much as God loves them. I need to start loving myself as much as God loves me. And that doesn't mean bragging on myself or becoming proud of myself, but honoring the person that God gave, made me, the, the spirit that he put in me, and recognizing that I matter to him. And you matter to him, whoever you are. I believe 
there's not a person on death row right now that Jesus doesn't love and didn't die for. No one ever went to the electric chair or got strapped to a gurney that up until the very last second, Jesus didn't offer the opportunity to repent and to, to love him the way he loved them at that very moment. That's how all-encompassing the love of God is. So whether your sin is big or little, it doesn't matter. God loves you as you are. He doesn't love sin, but he loves us. Isn't that crazy? So when I look at a bird today, I look at it completely differently. I, I, don't, I no longer take them for granted. I no longer take my little fish for granted. I really felt badly about that. I didn't want them to die because those are creatures that God made, just like those animals on Noah's Ark. God cared enough to spare them. So I'm gonna try to do better as an aquarium keeper, and I'm gonna try to, kill, uh, to not kill any more birds, to give up my serial killing habit of birds. But most of all, I'm going to love people. And I'm going to try to serve people the way Jesus loves them and serves them. And the way Jesus loves and serves me. How about joining me on that today? That would be a good, a good step for us to take on a cold Thursday, don't you think? Father, thank you for loving the birds. And I truly am sorry for everyone that I wiped out. I didn't intend to, but it happened. But thank you that you love us even more than the birds, more than the sparrows. So much, Father, that you've counted our hairs. So much that you sent your son for us. Thank you. Please bless my friends today with an understanding of the deepness, the depth, the width, the height of your love for them today. And let us walk like the people you said we are, children of the King. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, you go out there into Thursday. Don't know about where you're at, but where I'm at, the sun is shining at least for a while. And I plan on enjoying every moment that I can. Have a great day, friends. You're loved by your master, by your King. And uh, live like it. See you tomorrow.